Hey, what's going on internet? In this video, we're gonna talk about three types of holographic effects that you can use for motion graphics and for VFX. I hope you're doing awesome today. I'm doing great. My name is Josh Noel and I'm from Sunduck Film. This is gonna be a really cool tutorial because we're gonna talk about doing a holographic effects style that can be applied to motion graphics and also to VFX. So this is really one cool ultimate tutorial on creating awesome holographic effects. And I'm gonna break this tutorial down into three easy steps so you can easily apply it to your own work. And before we jump into our tutorial today, I wanna to say thank you to Premium Beat for sponsoring this video. Premium Beat is a royalty-free music provider for your creative video and motion graphic products. Projects. They have an extremely popular library with thousands of songs to choose from and they have a very easy in-depth search and menu filter system so you can quickly find the best songs for your video. So for your next video project, be sure to check out premiumbeat.com for your royalty free music. Alright, so go ahead and jump into our tutorial and let's get started. So here we are inside of After Effects and this specific animation is out of my own personal kit called the Motion Graphics Starter Pack which has over 150 accent motion graphics and titles within them so you can easily enhance your motion graphics. If you want to check out the full review on our very own kit, you can check our links in the video description. And we'll talk about our first technique which is creating the digital distortion around our motion graphic. So to get started, what we're going to do is go to Layer, New, Solid. And we'll call it Venetian and we'll click OK. Doesn't matter what the color is, go to Effect, Transition and we're going to grab Venetian Blinds. And we'll set the transition completion up to 43%. Then we'll set the direction to 90 degrees. So we have it going this way. And then we can set the width like the three. And then what we'll do here is for our placeholder for our motion graphics, uh, we're going to set the track mat to alpha mat. And now we'll have the lines within our motion graphics. And that's cool. Then what we'll do here is we'll come here to the beginning of our composition and we'll hit P on keyboard for our Venetian layer. And we'll add a keyframe for position. Go to the end of our composition. And we'll bring down the Y axis on the Venetian blinds. And if you want, we go to layer solid settings and we can increase the height. So this is a little bit taller than our composition. So it's not gonna go off our composition. And now you'll have this very subtle breakup animation on our composition and that looks cool. Then to continue this technique, we need to add you know legitimate distortion to this. So we'll go ahead and create another solid and we'll call it noise and click on make comp size, click okay. Then let's go to Effect, Noise and Grain, and let's add Fractal Noise. From Fractal Type, we need to set this to Max, and for Noise Type, let's set this to Block. And from here, we can increase the contrast by a little bit, bring down the brightness, so we kind of really maximize the bright and dark areas. Open up Transform, uncheck Uniform Scaling, and increase the uh, Scale Width. And we'll actually set the scale width to about 1300 to be specific and bring the scale height down to 20. All right, and that looks cool. And let's go to the beginning of our composition. Let's add a keyframe for offset turbulence. Go to the end and then let's grab the Y property here and we can bring this down. And we'll just have a little extra animation in here. And no, nope, that looks cool. Then what we'll do is go to layer pre-compose and we'll call it map and move all attributes into new comp. Click OK. Then we'll go to layer new adjustment layer. Let's turn off our map layer. We don't need it. Then let's go to effect distort and we're going to add displacement map and under the displacement map layer, set it to map. Now that we have our distortions in place, it looks like we've created a little bit more of a digital hologram. All right. So next up, we need to talk about the glow and the color of this effect. So, so let's go ahead and create another adjustment layer and then let's go up to effect color correction tint. And let's change the map to white and let's set this to like a nice, you know, blue color. Now we shifted the color a little bit. Then let's go to effect stylize glow. Then from here, what we can do is increase the glow radius to maybe about, you know, 70 or so. Well, actually, it's a little bit further. Let's go to 70. 80 is good. And then we increase the glow intensity if we want by a little bit. And maybe we'll decrease the glow threshold by a little bit. And that'll make it a little bit more, you know, glowy. And then we can duplicate this by going up to edit duplicate and then we'll have two glows here then we'll come here to original color set the a and b colors and then set this to sawtooth b greater than a and then we'll come over here and we can change the colors to like a blue increase the glow radius to maybe like 400 and we can decrease the glow threshold by a touch and maybe bring down the glow intensity and that just adds an extra layer of glow around the composition and that looks really nice. So now let's go ahead and add one more thing to this glow effect to really 
you know, pop it off. Let's go to layer, new adjustment layer again, and we'll call this uh, blur. And then let's go to effect, uh, blur and sharpen, and we're gonna add CC fast or CC radial fast blur. And let's bring the amount down to maybe five, six, seven, yeah. And then let's go ahead and all click the stopwatch for amount, and let's type in wiggle. And I love the new update for typing in expressions inside of After Effects. It's really cool. Then we'll type in 2 comma 10 close parenthesis. You actually don't even have to type close parenthesis if you're updated for After Effects. And that will kind of blur everything off a little bit. And that looks really cool. And before we move on to our third and final part of the tutorial, I need to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about our Accent Motion Graphics Starter Pack, which allows you to add over 125 Accent Motion Graphics to all your motion graphic and title work inside of After Effects and even Adobe Premiere. And it also comes with 20 pre-made titles. So essentially what you can do is take any of our 125 plus accent motion graphics and add it to your titles and motion graphic work by just clicking and dragging in our pre-made compositions. And you can easily change the colors and you can really take your work to the next level within a minute with our Accent Motion Graphics Starter Pack. If you want to learn more about our Accent Motion Graphics Starter Pack and our full review on it, you can check our links in the video description. So we'll move this to our third and final technique, which is going to go ahead and create the light underneath our hologram. So let's go to Layer, New, Solid. Make sure it is a white layer, and we can call it Bottom Light. And we'll click OK. Then what we'll do here is we'll grab the Pen Tool, and simply we'll add a point right here on the bottom. We'll go all the way to the top of our composition and we'll want to just finish this up like a triangle like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll, so we'll go ahead and move this layer underneath all of our adjustment layers. And then we'll hit T on keyboard for opacity. We'll set it down to like 4% and it's very subtle in there. Then we'll hit F on our keyboard to bring up the mass feather and let's feather this out by a little bit. So perhaps we'll set this to like 100 pixels. So you really can't notice it that much. Then let's go hit TR keyboard for opacity. And let's add a keyframe for opacity. And let's move it forward by a little bit. And then let's set the opacity down to 0%. So this will kind of just, you know, pop on very subtly. Make the last keyframe an easy, easy keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. Then let's go to effect transition. And let's add a linear wipe. Let's set the angle wipe to 180 degrees. And then let's bring down the transition completion to just be like right above our title. And let's go ahead and increase the feather, perhaps to like 60 or so. Then let's all click the stopwatch for transition completion. And let's type in wiggle, open parenthesis, perhaps, you know, 2 comma 20, close parenthesis. And this will just move out the top part by a little bit. And if we want, we can go ahead and just copy the glow effect that we've already created and paste it into our bottom light. Just to make that pop out just by a touch more. And as a quick tip, I'm not a big fan of actually adding this, but if you can also add just the lens flare effects under the effect generate menu. And you can add a lens flare and I have it set to the 105 prime and you can just position this lens flare to be like right on the bottom of the glow here. And it makes it look like it's being projected from the bottom, but that's really up to you if you want to add a uh, lens flare. I'm not a big fan of it. That's why I didn't really go in depth on you know, showing how to do that. So this is essentially our final holographic effect broken down into three easy steps. So that concludes our holographic effects for motion graphics and obviously can be used for VFX. Hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creative.